Hello, and welcome to Quick Start to Coding with Swift. Please may I introduce my co-host, Matt. Matt Hanlon is a long-time software developer, coach, teacher, and dad in Ireland. Thanks, Steve. And may I introduce Steve Bunce, an author, teacher, associate lecturer, and dad in the northeast of England. Thanks, Matt. We have an exciting session for you today. What good is it to learn how to code if you can't build your own games? Today, we'll apply some of our own coding skills to a game of rock, paper, scissors. The brilliant thing about today's lesson is that if we mess up, we can always reset it and start again. What will your game look like? Let's get started. Hello, and welcome to our unplugged part of the session. This week, we've been thinking about a number of computing concepts. On Monday, we were thinking about commands and how you would give instructions and how you would tell Byte to move around the Swift Playgrounds. If you remember, we made our paper origami dancers too, and these followed instructions in an algorithm to tell you what to do to make them. Then on Tuesday, we introduced our friend Jimu, the Mebot. Would you like to wave, Jimu? Thank you, Jimu. And we used the Swift Playgrounds to simulate moving Jimu around. And the concept we were thinking about then was functions, putting instructions together and commands together to help us save time and be lazy. So we just had to tell it once what to do. Then on Wednesday, we started to think about loops and how we could repeat things again and again to do it. And if you remember, we did lots of dancing then. We did dancing, which was the banana, banana and meatball. And also we repeated our dance of the Ode to Code, where we did the arms up, down, up, round, round, little shake, then arm up, down, and again faster, and then turn, down up, down up again faster, and back again, and then round to loop that dance again. So we thought about different dances, and you might have used your own dances, for example, you might have used the Renegade, or you might have used a dance which you like doing. But we were thinking about loops and repeating moves. On Thursday, we did about variables. And we talked about your dances, and we talked about the different variables involved in your dances. Whether it was a string, which would be the name of the dance, or whether it was just a number, an integer, which you would use there, where it might be the, the duration, how long the song was, or how many dance moves there were in there. So we were thinking about variables then, and we did our Swift Playgrounds, where we were looking at collecting the gems. So that brings us to today. Now today, we've got an exciting session for you because we are going to be doing about games. And the game we're going to play today is called Rock, Paper, Scissors. Rock, Paper, Scissors. So hopefully you know the rules of this game. You go one, two, three, and show either a rock or paper or scissors. If you have a rock and someone else does a rock, then that's a draw and you go again. If you have a rock and they have paper, they win because the paper wraps over the rock. If you have a rock and you have scissors, then you win because your rock will blunt their scissors. Okay? If you have paper and the other person has paper, it's a draw. If you have paper and a rock, then paper wraps the rock and you win. If you have paper and they have scissors, then unfortunately, they win because they can cut your paper with the scissors. And finally, if you have scissors, then scissors against scissors is a draw and you play again. Scissors against a rock, you lose because unfortunately, the rock blunts the scissors. 
But if you have scissors and they have paper, then you win because then you can cut the paper. So hopefully you've played this before. We're now going to play it with everybody and then we're going to go over and visit our school with Anders in Sweden and to see what he is doing with his class. So just to start with then, let's have a game, me and you. Are you ready? One, two, three. Ah, did you beat me? Let's have another one. One, two, three. Did you win? And last one. One, two, three. There we go. Now, your score, the number of times you either won or lost, is a variable, and that's again what we've been thinking about. So it's all coming together today. So I'm really excited, and we're gonna go over to find Anders in Sweden and his lovely class. And we're going to be thinking about games today, and Matt's gonna help us code our game in Swift Playgrounds using rock, paper, scissors. So I'm excited. I think I might just put on my dancing shirt just for all the games. So are you ready? Let's get playing. Hey there, guys. Hello, everybody. Well, today we're joined by Anders and we're over in Sweden. And here is his wonderful class. Are you ready? Rock, paper, scissors, away you go. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got, got a vicious battle going on in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Who will be the champion today? Now, we heard there's somebody undefeated there as well. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, hey! <laughs> Wonderful. So everyone is playing rock, paper, scissors. Everyone is thinking about the algorithm to play the game. <laughs> and they're keeping a score, which is a variable. <laughs> this is great. And then we're going to put all this together in a little bit in our playground. It's kind of fun mm -hmm. to see this in action live, and then we'll get to see it in, in code as well. Okay. Wow, intense battles going on. It is very intense. <laughs> Hopefully you're doing the same thing in your classroom, wherever you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, who's our leader? Mm. The, other, the other thing is, is, do you have a strategy? Do you have a way of doing this? So for example, if you've just done rock, do you go for the same one again? Or have you noticed that you always go for the same one first each time? So every time you do this, the first time you use the same one every time. <laughs> okay, so have a think. Also, can you understand your partner you're playing against? <laughs> so do you know what they might do? Ooh. Very fast. And the brilliant thing is that now you can go around playing rock, paper, scissors and say, I'm just doing my homework. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> wow. Pretty intense, pretty intense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good stuff. That That is brilliant. So, Anders, we shall say thank you for your sharing your class there with the rock, paper, scissors. We are going to do a little bit now of coding with Matt, and he's yeah. going to, to share with us how we can now take this game into oh, Swift Playgrounds. Yeah, thank you, guys. Tack. That was good. All right, so now we're going to take that barely controlled chaos from the classroom, and we're going to turn it over into a bit of code. So like all the other days, we're going to open up Swift Playgrounds. And instead of Learn to Code 1, 2, or MeBot Dances, we're going to open up this Rock, Paper, Scissors Playground. If you don't have it already, you just hit See All in More Playgrounds. It's in the challenges here. And it's over here. It's one of our beginner challenges. And you can see there are quite a few other ones that are really brilliant playgrounds, really fun to play around with. Um, but of course, nothing's more fun than actually writing your own game and then handing it over to your, your friends. So we're going to pick Rock, Paper, Scissors. And I'm going to open up the one that I've already got here. So unlike the Learn to Code 1 and 2, this is a challenge playground. So there's not as many introductory phases where we go through and we get explained to us what's happening exactly. We have to do a little bit of reading of the instructions here. So in the overview, it just tells us what rock, paper, scissors is in case you're not familiar with it. Just like Steve broke it down in the introduction, it's, it's an algorithm. This, these are the game mechanics. You know, we know that after three, you put forth your, your object. So whether it's a rock, paper, scissors, and then we've set up the rules to say rock beats beat scissors, rock loses to paper, and then scissors beats paper. So those are our game mechanics that we've built into our, our actual game. And we've got the game pre-built for us here. We have, we use this let keyword, it works a lot like our var keyword that we found out about yesterday. It's just declaring a variable that we've called game. We're setting it equal to this game. It looks a little bit like a function that we saw before. So we're sort of familiar with this. And then we can call these functions on our game, like load default settings, because you can see the parentheses at the end. It's an easy way to spot if it's a function or not. And then we say game.play. So that calls another function that starts up our game. So let's run our code and see what that looks like in practice. Okay, so I have a couple of arrows here in my Swift Playgrounds game. In fact, if I want to focus on just the game, which you might want to do if you're building more immersive experiences in your Swift Playgrounds, I can tap here on this bar in the middle and drag over to the side and look at my game full screen. And now I can tap on these arrows to change which object I pick. So I'm going to stick with rock and I'm going to hit the go button. So there we go, my opponent, who's a robot, picked scissors. I happen to win. I'm gonna play the next round. Gonna go. So the way this game goes is that I've got three rounds, best of three. I happen to win again. All right, she's sorry, I think it's best of five. Oh, I lost that one. So now my opponent has a, a win. So we've colored in the circle a little bit. We'll hit go again. I lost again. Oh, this is a tight one. I'm getting stressed. We'll play the next round. We'll go. Oh, I lost. Bummer. All right. That happens. So let's not try again. I'm, I'm going to be a sore loser and just give up. I can actually drag back out. You saw the little arrow from the side. I dragged back out to the middle so I can get my code back. Now I'm going to go to the next page where we can personalize our game a little bit. And this is where it gets a little bit more fun. So someone's written a lot of code to build up this game, to show the, the circle that fills in as you win rounds. It shows your emoji that you've picked for your object. It shows your opponent's emoji in their own little circle. You can pick different objects. So they put a lot of thought into how this game is going to work. Now the benefit to us is that now we get to go with code go and modify that game a little bit. 
So we have we have some uh, some hints here. We have something new. We have a new tab at the top of our our code editor, and we can tap in there. And we can see a whole bunch of code someone's written, and it's called shared code. But back on this page, so we've done the same thing. We have a game. We've created a game. We've called this setup function, and we've passed in our game. We talked about parameters a little bit on Wednesday or on Tuesday, way back. Can't even remember when it was. This is just a way to pass in extra information to your function to let it do just that that bit more. So let's see. So to personalize my game, I'm going to change. Uh, like I love donuts personally, but let's change. Let's change our game prize. I'm going to delete that donut. I'm going to bring up the keyboard. And of course, I'm going to go tap on the, the smiley face and bring up my emojis because I, I don't want just letters to be my prize. I want my game prize to be something interesting. Uh, let's pick something else food related. Not a donut. We'll have a, a chocolate bar. Now, if I tried to run my code now, I'd have a small problem. Can anyone spot what that problem is? We can try running it and then I'll have my error pop up. And it gives me this kind of cryptic looking message, unterminated string literal. What does that mean in English? Um, it just means that I have a, we talked about strings a little bit yesterday. So we had, for example, in the, for a contact list, you might have a variable called name and it was set equal to Chris and Chris was in double quotes. We need to have those quotes surrounding our strings. And even this chocolate bar is a string, believe it or not. So I need to go down. I need to get my keyboard back up. So I'm going to tap on that carrot. The double quotes are over the L on my keyboard. So I'm going to drag down. And I'm not even in the right place. So that's not helping me. Here, we're going to drag down there. Now, one thing I'd like to note, something new that we haven't seen before, is these lines here are in gray and they're actually English language instructions for us. These are called comments and really good engineers, really good programmers will leave these comments in their code to let themselves know what they were thinking of at the time when they wrote the code or let other people know who are going to read your code. So whoever wrote this code was very thoughtful and left a message saying, example, we're going to change the game prize to a donut. So, it's very important to make sure your comments are still relevant. So if I update my code, I probably want to update my, my comment there to say the same thing. So we'll make sure that our comment says the same thing as our, as our code. It doesn't matter. Comments just get ignored by Swift, but they're very useful for other coders who come to your code later down the line. So with just changing that, that game prize. Let's try playing that again. Let's run our code and see what we get. There we go. We have a tie. Next round, we'll go again. Tie again. We'll go again. Tie again. Oof. I don't think anybody will win this game. Die again. I think we're just picking rocks at this stage. Oh, I lost. All right, well, better than a tie, I guess. Oh, I lost again. Huh? You know what? I think my strategy of sticking with rock is probably not the best. No, nope, we got another tie. Surely the robot has to pick scissors at some point. Nope. All right, so... The robot gets the chocolate bar, which is completely useless for a robot. So that's this is one way to customize the game. You, we can also do a few other things. We can change emoji values for game add action, game add opponent, and game prize. But let's I want to play around with the colors. So I want to change some of these colors. So I'm going to change game my color after I've changed the prize. So let's go down here. There we go. Sometimes you have to tap around to get your keyboard and your autocomplete bar to pop up. So in my autocomplete bar, I have game. So I'm going to say game. 
And then to change my properties on the game, I can use this dot. It's called dot notation to access variables that are on my game. And I can see a whole list of them down here in the autocomplete bar. So there are actions. I can add other actions. I can add hidden actions. I can add opponents, background colors, inner circle color, main button color. I'm going to change, uh, let's see, rounds to win. I'm going to change those. So I'm going to just make it so that it's a one, one round game. So just like variables that we saw yesterday, we're going to use the equal sign to assign our round number. Now you could make this a really long game. This is a great way to waste time in class. I'm not recommending that, obviously. But we can say, okay, cool. We'll pick one for our number of rounds to win. So if I try again, if I run my code and I hit go, oh, we have a tie. All right, so we've got to have our, our another round until somebody wins or loses. Tie again. All right, tell you what, I'm, that's it. I'm changing, I'm changing the paper. Let's see if that does it for me. All right, I finally won. Whew. So it was just a one round game. So when someone finally won or lost, uh, because I changed this line here, I didn't have to go and keep playing again and again. So if you want to just have a quick game with friends, this is a good way to tweak it. What other properties might you change? Actually, you guys have an idea over in Sweden. What would you guys change? Background colors. Game dot. What do you what do you think? This is what I love about Swift Playgrounds. This autocomplete bar lets you see all these kind of interesting things you can change. So let's see. Well, I just I'll change my color anyway. So again, just like before, I'll I'll assign it. Now it tells me the type of property this is. So it tells me that it's a UI color. And this is really nice in Swift Playgrounds because it gives me this little thing here. So if I tap on that, it lets me pick my color from this fairly nice color picker. So let's see, let's pick, I'm going to pick uh, dark green. So now if I run my code and I hit go, we'll see that my color, when I win, changes to this new dark green. So there's a ton of things that we can personalize on this, on this game. What we're going to do now is, following the quick start to go code with Swift PDF that we've been working off of all week, I'm going to jump to the end. There's a page called Solution. So this is where we can go to town. We have a, a lot more code. We have this game where we, game property where we set up our, our variable. We have a function here called setup example, where this is where we can see those add action functions in place. So they've added an action for the rock. They've added an action for paper. They've added an action for scissors. They've added this other new action, rock and roll. They've added a double paper action, put our hands up, and then double scissors. So it gets a lot more complicated. In this particular game, they've decided, you know what, we're going to make a whole new set of actions that we can use. So we're going to have to think about how our game works. So now that we have all these actions, we have to set up the rules for our actions. Now we haven't talked about a lot of these, the syntax is new. We've got square braces here which we use to denote a list of things that we want to talk about. We haven't, we haven't gone into that yet. We do go into that in Learn to Code 1. But this is what I love about this playground. Even if you're not 100% familiar with this code, you can always play around with it. If you break something and you get cryptic error messages like unterminated string literal, you can always go up to the three dots, hit reset page, and no harm, no foul. You can just restart. It's a really nice thing to have that reset page button. We also have an example of our hidden action. So one we can't pick, but one that might come up from one of our opponents. So in this case, we've got a ghost. We've got another hidden action. There's a unicorn that beats everything. 
And I like that they've commented this so that we know what this code does. And then down here, we've got opponents for the game. So we've got a lion, frog, panda, and monkey. We're winning an ice cream cone at the end of this. We can see that they've changed loads of the different colors. And then they play it at the end. So this is a great place to play around with, with your code and just try out different colors and things. I know one of my favorite things to do would maybe to make a theme game. So I would take something like maybe James and the Giant Peach and say, all right, well, I'm going to make the opponent's creatures from James and the Giant Peach. So instead of a lion, I'm going to delete that and we'll make it a spider to start with. Not two spiders, just one. Uh, instead of the frog, we'll do a, let's see, a ladybug or a ladybird. We'll get rid of the panda and we'll make the panda a, let's see, caterpillar. And then the last opponent will be, let's see. Because I lost my emoji keyboard. Well, we'll undo that. The other nice thing down here, I did that on purpose just to show you guys the undo and redo buttons. There we go. We just undid that. We'll get back to our, our monkey. We'll delete him, pick another emoji. And let's see, what's another character from James and the Giant Peach? We need another bug. We'll pick the grasshopper. So the game prize, maybe the game prize in this case will be a peach um, in keeping with our theme. But can anybody spot what I did wrong? I've got a red dot. Does anyone know how I would fix that particular problem? Anybody in Sweden want to shout it out? What am I missing? Ah, uh, yeah, good one. Missing a quote. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So I might do some other things. I might make a hidden action, maybe the, the birds, maybe make another hidden action, the, the shark that appears in James and the Giant Peach. This is a great place to, to go and think about how you want to build your game, how you want it to behave. These hidden actions are great. Adding other super powered um, hype beast actions of your own that you can pick, like a unicorn that beats everything, uh, is another way to really annoy your friends when you hand them the game and play against them. So let's try playing our James and the, Pe G James and the Giant Peach themed game. So let's hit go. I've got my opponents. Okay, I lost. Those two won. So next round, I'm going to actually pick... Let's pick Hard Rock. I lost again. Oh, man. This is not my day. This is not my day. I lost again. I should have... I definitely should have been training for Rock, Paper, Scissors competitions all week. I obviously haven't. All right, I got one win. Let's switch it up. Now, because I didn't set in here, I didn't set the rounds to win back to one. So we're playing through all the rounds. So everyone has to win. Or to win the game, you have to win three rounds. So I lost again. The unicorn's pulling ahead. Or the ladybug. Tie. Next round. So what, what customizations have you made? Drop them in the chat if, if you want. I like that we have a few people commenting on what things we, we forgot. Some other suggestions. That's excellent. Now, there was a question. Um, is the computer choice completely random? Um, yeah, there's a way to code to get random results. So you can pass in a, a list of things and say, hey, give me a, a random item out of this particular list. That's a very common thing that we would do, especially in games. Unicorn is most popular. Cool. Oh, it looks like the spider's pulling ahead. 
I lost again. Next round, surely we'll have a winner. Not yet. All right, last round, last round, and then we're going to go back to Sweden. A tie. Amazing. All right. So this was Rock, Paper, Scissors. This is where it gets really fun. We're building our own games. I love when you get to kind of build up your own kind of cool theme that you've put a lot of thought into, and then you can hand over your iPad to someone else and let them play this game. Um, get some feedback from them. Say, oh, actually, maybe I don't like the unicorn, that it's too overpowered. You know, maybe make it a little, make it lose to at least one thing. Um, it's a great way to test out your, your coding and, uh, and show off your skills. So, all right, let's go back to the, back to the classroom and say hi to the guys again. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey again, guys. So what do you think? How did your rock, paper, scissors turn out? Who was the winner? Who had the, the coolest theme? Did anybody get to theme their, their playground a little bit? I themed it. Yeah? What, what theme? Pancakes and hot dogs. Hot dogs. Uh, perfect. Pancakes and hot dogs. Awesome theme. Reading about and learning about uh, different kind of bacteria and uh, cholera maybe. So we're going to see and, and COVID-19. So. Cool. Do you know what? That's brilliant too, because now now you can say that if you get caught playing this in science class, it's okay. This yes. is it's science. Yes. That's perfect. One more time. Hang on to your love. Go back. So the the COVID is uh, it's a, it's a tie against the COVID. And the vaccine is beating the, the COVID, eventually. Uh, that's good. <laughs> good. I like yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. And this is, the, this is the cholera. So we have the bacteria. We have the, the clean water. And the clean water is losing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Great. And we that's have good. the hot dog and the... Pancakes. Uh... Oh yeah, let's see that one. Yeah. Is it just before lunch? Must be. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's funny <laughs> how we get a lot more food-based games when we're near lunch. Yeah. So there we have Make three of the three of the students uh, coding on rock, paper, and scissors. Ah, great! That's very cool. Very well done. Very well done. That is wonderful. I love the way you demonstrated those. And also when you made the Swift Playground full screen so we could see the whole game. That was a great idea. Yeah. That was. That was yeah. excellent. Mm -hmm. What um, was the hardest part of today? What do you think was the hardest part of changing that game? They don't think anything was hard. Awesome. Good, good. <laughs> and what was it? Well, what was the easiest part then? What was the thing they found most easy? Changing colors. Okay. Yeah, brilliant. Okay. And I love the way that you themed it for for beating COVID and, and cholera and other things. Can you think of another theme for another subject that you learn? <laughs> that's fair. Colonism. 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 I think it is. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Brilliant. Okay. So we, we love to see all your wonderful advances. 
we've had comments to say how fast you were playing rock, paper, scissors, <laughs> and how quick, quick hands you have to do that, to do those different shapes. I love the way that you have customized your games to, to think about the colors and changing the look and feel of your game, but also your great ideas for the theme, how it has a theme, rather than just picking, as I did, I picked zombie, monkey, hamster, genie. So no theme there, <laughs> I picked different emojis. So I love the way that you have done that. You've done a great, great bit of work there to do that. And I'm so pleased that you can call all of yourselves coders. You are all good coders and you have got a promising future there in the developing Swift playgrounds and then developing that as Swift into apps. So I hope you enjoyed your, your day today. We are so grateful for you sharing. I'd just like to say, pack. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we shall say goodbye for today. <laughs> mm, excellent work, excellent. And next Friday, we'll be returning back to Sweden again to.